Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And in this video, I want to take a look at the AMSO add-on. It's the Apollo add-on, very well done. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, I will put some links in the description down below where you can download it. The installation is pretty straightforward. Uh, like most Orbiter add-ons, you basically, you're, you're going to have a zip file you're going to open that zip file, drag all the contents into your Orbiter directory, let go. That's basically it for the installation. comes in two parts. There's the add-on itself, and then there's a sound pack. Um, the sound pack's optional. You don't have to have it. And there, I suppose there might even be good reasons not to get it. But at any rate, we'll, uh, we'll just kind of jump in. Now, I, let me switch uh, camera views here. That when, you, when you put the add-on into your system there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of folders and files and i think part of why people have problems with this add-on is because they don't even really know where to where to go to kind of play around with it they get a little bit lost with all the options uh you can one thing you can do is you can kind of come into these as 506 508 and so on you can click in here and you can see like this will let you pick up from some particular point in the apollo 11 mission you know step one is all the way back at the uh, launch pad just five minutes before liftoff and then step two is right before the first stage preparate uh, separation so this would be you know a minute or so into the launch and so on you can do that that's one option what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go into the all missions at liftoff and i don't really think it matters which one you pick i'm not 100 percent sure i certainly haven't gone through all these but i'm going to pick the infamous apollo 11 there's a bunch of information over here. You can read it if you want. We're, uh, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to go through all the details of launching uh, at a specific time and pressing the right buttons to make the retraction arm and all that. We're going to bypass all that, mainly because I don't want to sit here listening to audio for five minutes. And that's basically what, what we would have to do if we followed through this sequence. And I also hate editing videos, so I'm not going to do that. What we're going to do is what it says down here somewhere. It says that you can basically, yeah, right here, for an immediate launch with autopilot, you can just press enter on the numeric keypad. So uh, I, I think maybe people just have never read that line <laughs> because if you do that, it makes the entire thing so simple a caveman can do it. And if you don't want the automated launch, you can also uh, take full manual control just by you know, just like you would do uh, with any other launch, basically press the plus key on the numeric keypad, hold it and tap the control key to lock it. And then you have manual, manual launching. Uh, for the sake of this video, I am going to go ahead and take advantage of the autopilot and that will um, allow me to get through the launch part of it very quickly because we can use time warp and uh, we'll see how that works. So let's go ahead and launch, uh, let's go ahead and start one of these and I'm going to pick Apollo 11 for no particular reason other than it's famous. And now I can switch to the usual camera view. Uh, so once the launch gets started, um, I'm going to basically time warp through most of it. And you'll see how that plays out where when you're time warping, it, it automatically comes out of time warp every time there's a new audio sequence to play, which is actually pretty good. Uh, let me bring up orbit. We'll just go projection and frame. So here we are with the you know the exterior view um, and by the way if you don't like this sort of tilted axis on the uh, tail which i've never been a fan of that if you press Control f1 go to ground and then choose uh the the earth is fine ksc is fine but choose pad 39b i think I, I guess it doesn't which matter probably matter which one of these you pick but pick one of them and hit apply now you can close that out now, if you right click and kind of drag forward, you can move close to the close to the launcher. And when you get right up next to it now, this will probably be a little more familiar um, in terms of uh, you can use your mouse wheel to kind of go up and down this way and then right click around to get more of this view where you're spinning around, which is more typically what you'd be used to when you're looking at the exterior view of the XR2 or the exterior view of the Delta Glider. It kind of works more like this. Uh, the reason that it works differently when you have vertical launchers because basically instead of sitting you know feet down like this 
the feet are on the ground so it makes the camera angles really weird and I've never liked it so I prefer to have this type of view it's enough about that so uh, to launch you know one key that's it and we're off to the races and again that's just hitting enter on the numeric keypad and this is gonna be completely automated now the nice thing about this is that um, for one thing it's actually more realistic because again you know the we don't manually control rockets in real space flight so it's a little more realistic uh, once it gets up off the ground a little ways we can press F2 to change our camera and we can also uh, time warp and it'll be fine it won't mess anything up what'll happen is it'll get to certain key points in the launch and it'll automatically come out of time warp so I'll show that let me hit T you can see we go to 10x there it just came out automatically I didn't press anything and the reason it came out of time warp is so it can play this audio sequence that you're now hearing and I think this audio sequence comes from the audio pack add-on I'm not 100% sure on that but if you don't have those uh, sounds it's, you might want to install the audio add-on um, every time it stops and plays a sound you can just hit T again and it'll continue forward automatically and then once it's ready to play another audio sound it'll come out of time warp play the audio sequence and you don't even have to listen to it you can just hit T again and it'll bypass it but sometimes sometimes there will be an audio sequence like almost immediately after one so basically you'll have to hit T a few times to get through this uh, quickly and I, I've never ran into any problems doing this you know sometimes time warp causes problems but with this particular uh, launch system I suppose probably because it automatically comes out of time warp every few seconds it's uh, it's no problem doing it this way so we can watch the launch from the exterior view and you know it's much cooler than just looking at instrumentation occasionally you'll probably want to come back inside to see how the launch is progressing you can see we've still got a ways to go we're only up to uh, you know, 2,500 meters a second so I'm gonna get through this part quickly I'm just gonna continue time warping till we uh, till we're all the way to orbital velocity so I'm probably gonna bypass most of the sounds and again if you want to watch the full launch sequence just uh, load it up hit enter and just sit back and watch but that's kind of like watching a movie in my opinion and, and that's not really what orbiter that's not really the fun of orbiter at least not for me the fun of orbiter is doing things myself uh, but again, I didn't want to do a manual launch of the Apollo here for this for this video. So I'm just going to continue time warping, and we'll get there eventually. We've still got 3,000 meters a second to go. Skipping these sound files, just continuing on. That concerns me a little bit, that oscillating. Don't think I've seen that before. Skip through that though. Looks like everything's okay. We're still right on the bubble. You know, that's our position. That's our apoapsis. We're right in the apoapsis, which is going to give us a nice, clean orbit insert. Time warp through. Okay, and we're almost in. We're almost to orbital velocity. You can see we're up to uh, 7,000 meters a second. So we've just got a little bit more to go. Let's go. It's a good time warp to speed that up. And it'll automatically come out of time warp once we uh, get a little bit after main engine cutoff. There it is. Okay, so that's it. We are in orbit. Let me go ahead and listen to this for a second. Okay, basically they're just telling us that we're go for orbit. Okay, so once you have got into orbit, you have a f there's a few things you can do, but if you really kind of want to follow the flight, uh, what we really want to do now is set up a, a TMI burn, a trans, no, not TMI, T, whatever it's called, to go to the moon, basically. So let's do that. And I'm going to go ahead and use TransX, just because I'm super familiar with it. And I've got so many videos on how to do, how to set up TransX to go to the moon that I'm not going to walk through that slowly here. I'm just going to do what I have to do. There's the moon. We're going to go forward on this side. Going to view our encounter. We're going to bring up TransX over here. And we're going to view our maneuver. Turn maneuver mode on. And we're going to... We could even probably do uh, Enjo's new automatic deal, but I'm not going to do that. Add in some prograde to get ourselves out 
to the distance of the moon. It's a bit much. And now we just need to work on the timing of our burn here. So we're going to view over to the maneuver date and bring it down to a finer setting. Still a bit much. And so this is where we are. We're probably going to encounter over here. So let's go all the way around to the other side. Do an adjustment. And we're going to need more prograde than that. And you can see now, and I'm not going to worry about getting a really nice flight out to the moon. It's, good. it's a bit much. So now we're going to work on the timing a bit. And you can see everything's coming down nicely now, minimum altitude. And uh, we'll go with something like that. I'm not, again, to do a, a correct flight out to the moon with the Apollo missions, you definitely want to set up a free return trajectory. That's the way it, that's the way it's supposed to be done. But we're not going to mess with all that here today. Okay, so once that's set up, now I'm going to uh, view over to target. And I believe it's actually been, uh, I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but it's been so long since I've really spent time with the orbiter that there's just so much I'm forgetting. So auto center, I want to have that available. And then we're going to uh, warp time forward. Let's get closer to the time to begin the burn. Then we'll come out of time warp and check out all of our stuff. Probably uh, a thousand seconds out. So we're at a hundred. Let's go a little faster. Be careful with my time warps. And we don't have to worry about circularizing, circularizing our orbit or anything like that because the way the... Uh, the way the Apollo gets into orbit, uh, rather the way the launcher works, we're basically circular once we're in orbit, more or less. Check that. Yeah, we're, we're up high enough. It's not quite as high as I would normally like to be, but that's good enough. And I forgot what I was looking at over here. Oh yeah, TransX. So let's get closer again. Let's get down all the way down to about 600 seconds. And then what I'll do is come out of time warp. And let's view over to the maneuver again and do an update. And you'll see, as always, things just change a lot once we do that. So now we just want to clean up our maneuver a little bit. You can see here, timing is probably our bigger issue that we want to deal with. So let's bring this back a bit. And now let me come over to prograde and see what needs to happen there. It looks like we need less prograde, maybe. No, a little bit more than that. And timing. Uh, I guess we're just going to encounter a little bit after the node. And again, that's, that's not a big deal because this particular flight, I'm not worried about the whole thing. So once we have our TMI burn set up, did I say TMI? TLI, that's the word I'm looking for. Translunar injection, TLI, not TMI. Once we have that set up, we can then... Just tweak that a little bit better. Let me overshoot that a tad and see if I can clean up that timing a little bit better. Yeah, good enough. Once that's set up, we can come over to view target, and I think we're close enough now. We can probably go ahead and do auto center. Although I'm not sure if it's a good idea with the Apollo stuff or not. I know there are some some crafts that really it's not a good idea to use these tools so I think I'll actually shut that off let me just let it center itself first actually let me go ahead and turn it off now and we'll just rotate manually And I'll also take care of the burn manually rather than try to risk using the uh, the automated tools. So we're pretty well centered up now. We're going to begin the burn in about nine minutes or something like that. So let's warp time forward to get closer to that time. And you do want to do this, by the way. I should have mentioned this. You want to do your TMI burn, TLI, excuse me, TLI burn before you do any limb separation or anything like that. So that's, that's why I'm doing it in this order. 
and you'll see why or hopefully you'll understand why here in a moment basically we need we need this part in order to accomplish the burn if we separated all that stuff we wouldn't be able to do the burn so do this part first let's get a bit closer it's close enough get recentered the sensitivity on this um, on the rotation is pretty good um, some, some of these ships you know sometimes the the sensitivity is so dull that it takes a lot of rotation in order to get things rotated how you want that's not the case with this particular add-on oh, sorry guys Cancel that. always seems to happen when I'm recording Okay, so we're going to begin the burn in 20 seconds, 10 seconds, getting there. 8, 7, 3, 2, 1, burning. And I want to keep an eye on my green X as always, just to make sure that I'm not drifting too much. So I'm going to go ahead and time warp through the burn as much as I can. Watching the Delta V, of course. Drifting a little bit out there, so let's go back to real time and bring the X down a bit. And warp time forward a bit more, get through the burn a little more quickly. drifting a lot so let's get things set back to center and we're getting kind of down toward the bottom of the burn so I probably won't be able to do much time warp at this point have to uh, just wait it out do a little bit more though that's about as close as I want to get okay so we will just watch that Delta V six five four three two and engines off I think I might have overshot that just a touch okay so view back over to the maneuver turn it off and then we can see how we did and then we can start doing more with the mission here turn that off you can see things are not great go to linear um, actually now that I think about it with this particular with this particular configuration we're probably gonna to have to adjust clean this up after we're separated so now we're on the way to the moon but we don't want to take all this stuff with us so once the burn is complete and you've kind of checked your transects to make sure that the maneuvers off the auto rotates off all that stuff very important um, you press J that will separate everything and now we need to uh, fairly quickly we don't want to take forever to do this we need to rotate this part of the because this is where we are our control our focus is on this guy and we're going to want to rotate him around 180 degrees and then dock with the limb so let's go ahead and do that and it's kind of cool actually if you do it the way using this 3d view which i'm not a big fan of these views but for this particular purpose it's pretty cool press the uh, control and alt key on your keyboard and then tap the left arrow to get over into the I guess the pilot seat and then control alt up arrow so that you can have this viewing uh, what would you call it reticle maybe it will also help to change the field of view and we'll get to that in a minute but first of all let's rotate and I don't get the rotation call out so I'm gonna have to come over to this view from time to time so I know which RCS mode I'm in I'm in rotation yeah, let's go ahead and rotate around you can see we rotate very quickly which is actually a little surprising how quickly this module rotates now that I've started the rotation I'm gonna just time warp around come out of time warp and kill so that we don't kind of overshoot we don't we want to be more conservative probably with our fuel once we have the limb in view I think it's a really good idea to go ahead and press uh, Z on your keyboard 
and you kind of want to zoom in so that you can see this box more clearly. It'll make more sense in a minute, but probably 35 degrees, maybe even 30, 25, something like that. Probably 25. Now I need to, I need to move forward and dock with the limb. And I have at my disposal, the only thing I have instead of the MFD, the docking MFD, which I think you can use, but we're going to do it sort of the old school way. There's actually a crosshair. Let me rotate a little bit off center so you can see it. There's a crosshair in this viewing reticle, and we're going to use this crosshair in order to help us dock. There's also a crosshair system on the limb, and we're going to line everything up. Now, it's I don't do this real often, so I probably will have to cheat and look at the external view a few times. So forgive me for that. But I believe what we need to do is we need to rotate over this way. And I believe you can see this white disc. Yeah, and let me, I'll zoom in a little bit more here in a second. Let me get rotated over first. That's good enough. Now let me zoom in a little more just so we can see clearly that white disc. Let's go all the way to 10. There's 10. If you look at that white disc, you can see there's a crosshair type of thing on it. There's, it's left to right, and then there's also the center one, but only goes one direction down, or if you're rotated completely over, then it would be facing up. If I recall correctly, we need it to be facing down. So let me uh, rotate now so that I am have my crosshair on line with that one, and I need to rotate a little more this way back that way. Now you can see that we're basically, it's, you can see that our crosshair is more or less in line with that one. Now let me check to see if that alignment makes sense. I think it does. We'll have to get closer. So now I'm going to switch to translation and I don't get the call out unfortunately, so I just have to remember which RCS mode I'm in. I'm in translation now, so I'm going to start moving forward. Now this crosshair that we're looking at on the limb has other visual indicators to let us know if we're too high, if we're too low, or if we're too far left and right. Behind these black lines, there are these red lines. Now I'm going to purposely mess up my position with the limb so that you can see these more clearly. So let me, I'm, gonna, I'm going to rotate basically up in relation to the, to the limb right now. So now you can see I'm not I'm not rotating, but I'm translating up. And let's let's actually say that's good enough for now. And I want to get closer. So I'm translating forward to move more quickly toward the limb. And I don't really honestly I don't know what instrumentation that they had to let them know how close they were, like you know five meters out, six meters out. Uh, at least in the Apollo 13 movie that I saw, I know. I think it was Fred Hayes actually apparently sat in the other window using like visual radar of some kind to let Jim Lovell know how close he was. I don't know how accurate that was, but that's what that's what I saw in the movie. Now, as we're getting a little bit closer, you can see that this, there's this red line above that black, which tells me that I'm too high. I need to translate down. Basically, I don't want to see any red. So let me slow down so I'm not moving toward the limb anymore. And let me also translate way off to the side. And you'll start to see this red stuff appear in, um, in this one as well, which will let you know, you know, clearly you're way off to the side. It's starting to come into view now. So that's, that's how we can tell if we're, if we're lined up correctly or not. And obviously right now I'm, I'm way off. But So let me, let me translate down now. But also keep in mind that the translation is only one part of it. You also have to have the rotation all correct as well. It's a little bit easier for the rotation, though, I think. So translating down. And again, I'm just trying to make sure. I, I basically, I just want to see black. If I see any red, then I know that I'm off in some direction or another. And we still need to go down. And now I need to translate a little bit left and we're getting we're getting a little bit closer but now I want to work on the rotation a little bit so I'm switching to rotation boy that is sensitive 
that you probably want to use control rotation only. And you can see things are looking pretty good, but I can see small amounts of red on top and small amounts of red to the right. So I need to translate a little bit down and a little bit to the left. So switching to translation. Actually, apparently quite a bit down. Let's go with that. Again, we don't want to go too much because uh, rotation also plays into it. Switching to rotation. Translating that crosshair back up so that it will be dead center over top of the black stuff there in the middle of the white disc. And now I'm just nulling out my translation because I can feel I got a little bit in there. Okay, now I want to kind of take a look. And again, normally I wouldn't do this, but I need to look at the external view to know how well my alignment is. Because I can't remember how the, how the disk needs to be laid out. So let's get a little closer. We're a bit far out. And I don't remember if I'm in translation or rotation. I'm in translation. So let me get closer in. And the other problem with doing the docking this way is because the field of view is so, you know, we, we basically we have to zoom in. So it gives us a very, um, you know, like an objects and mirror are closer than they appear type of look. So I, I feel like I'm right on top of the limb, but I'm not. I'm still out quite a ways. But that's because I'm zoomed in so much. So as I get a little bit closer, it'll probably help if I zoom out a few degrees at a time. I just want to make sure I keep this well in view. But yeah, let's get let's get closer. And I, I would really like to keep this under 30 minutes, but I don't know if I'm going to get to. Okay, we're almost there. In fact, let me go ahead and do this. Let me go ahead and null out my forward movement. Let me go back, let me go down to 0 0.1, change camera views, and we'll call that the end of this part of the video because I don't want to rush through, I don't want to rush through this too much. Uh, so if you like this part of the video, please do hit the like button down below. If you didn't like it, it's okay, hit the don't like button. And if your thoughts and feelings are more complicated than like and dislike, uh, leave comments down below. And actually leave comments anyway because I always like to have comments from people. I like to get a bit of discussion on each video because when new people come in and watch the video, uh, there's something more for them to look at than just me talking. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and pick up on the next part right away. So um, uh, keep watching uh, or tune into part two of this, and hopefully we'll get all docked in the next part. See you in the next video.